This video is going to show you how to begin with Flipgrid, create your first grid, and add your first topic inside it. So if you don't have a Flipgrid account, you're going to go to flipgrid.com and click on sign up today. And you can choose to sign in with your Google account or your Microsoft account. Once you've done that, you will come back to this page and click on Educator Login. So the first thing to do is to create a new grid. Now we're going to choose our grid community type. When we look at the different types, there are school email domain, student ID list, and PLCs and public grids. School email domain is going to allow students within um, a school system that have either a Google school account or a Microsoft school account to access your grids. With a student ID list, if your school is not a Google system or a Microsoft system, then you can add a student list and it will give the children QR codes for them to scan to allow them to enter into your grid safely. And then if you're going to share it outside of a school system, you can use the PLCs or the public grids. But just keep in mind that anybody that posts to those grids needs to be older than 16 years old. So the best choice for our system is a school email domain because we are a Google system. I'm going to name my grid sample and then I can create a flip code. I can leave this um, sample one there or I can change it to something that is more me. So I changed it to my first name and sample. And then I can personalize my grid with a picture. So I'm going to choose this cool kitty cat or I can even upload one. Let's click next. Now we're going to enter our school email domain. And for us, it is the calbk12.org. Oops. I'm gonna spell it right. <laughs> K12.org. And it says, please press enter. And now anybody with a DeKalbK12.org account will be able to access our grid if they have the link. All right, my grid is ready. So now it's time to get in there and add some topics. Now your grids are overarching umbrellas that hold your topics, which are like the prompts or the lessons that your, that your students are going to actually respond to. So when you get your new grid, it gives you an ideas section and also an introductions, which is um, a quick way for you to do your first grid just by letting your kids get used to the tool by introducing themselves. So let's look into this one. If I click into the introductions, we can see that it has this topic, introductions. Welcome to our classroom grid. This is a space where we will learn together and share our ideas. Introduce yourself in 90 seconds or less and share something that makes you smile. So we'll notice that there are no videos here as of yet. This is what your students would see. If you want to look at it exactly like your students would see it, which is a good way for you to learn what to expect, you can click on the flip code and it says view as student. So let's walk through this as a student and see how they would respond. So as they logged into Flipgrid, they would use this code and it would have them log in with their Google account or their Microsoft account. Click on Google for us and choose their name from the list. And here's where this, what the students would be seeing. So they're going to click this. After reading the prompt, they're going to click tap to record. And that's going to bring up their camera. And so now they can record the answer to their prompt. Now if they forgot what they were supposed to be answering, they can click this button up here. And there's their um, question again. And they can also get a sticky and they can type in what they want to say and, um, and help them remember what they want to say when they go to recording. When they're ready, they're going to click record. 
Hi y'all. So click pause and go to next. Hey. Review it. And then be ready to snap a selfie. And now that they have their selfie, they can decorate it with stickers. And they can even draw on it. And then when they like it, they can click submit. And that's all there is to adding a Flipgrid video as a student. Pretty simple. I think your kids will catch on really quickly. And when they get back to here, they'll see all the different videos here sitting um, that have been created so far. All right, so let's go back as a teacher and let's look at the different actions that we can do to that topic to make it our own. So when we're looking at our topic, we can click on topic actions and edit the topic. <clears throat> and so here we have all the different details about our topic. We have a title, a topic tip, such as don't forget to look at the camera or rec um, practice what you're going to say before you start recording. You can also give them a different choice of time, anywhere from 15 seconds all the way up to five minutes. And then in the topic description slash question, this is where you write what you want them to respond to. All right, topic privacy is really important. In the video moderation, you can turn this on or off. If it is moderated, that's going to allow the teacher to have to view every video before it goes live to anybody else. And that's a very great option, especially starting out. As you get to know your students and they get to learn your rules, that way they don't post something that's inappropriate before you get to see it and then it goes live for everybody to see. On the topic status, you can leave it active, which is where they can uh, view all the videos that are there and they can also um, add videos. If you choose it to frozen, students can view the videos but they can't add any new ones. And then if you choose an active, nobody can view it or add um, but the only person that can still see it is the teacher themselves. You can add a topic resource. Now this, a lot of times I like to add a GIF there or an emoji or an image, or even you can add a video of your own that you create inside Flipgrid giving the instructions. You can add up to nine external links uh, to go with this. It could be something from your Google Drive or a YouTube video, something that you pulled from your computer. And then on the video features, you can allow the students to do the stickers and drawings. You can allow the students to uh, reply to each other's videos with a video. And you'll have to choose what works for your class and for each topic, it may be different. And then here are your feedback settings as well. You're gonna click update topic to save all your choices. And then you're ready to share it with your kids. So there are several ways that you can share it. This code right here is the individual code to give the kids to be able to access this topic. You can tell them to go to flipgrid.com and type in this code. They would go to the rainbow page, as I like to call it, and then they type their code in right here and that'll take them right to it. Or if you're using Google Classroom, you can click share topic and there's a Google Classroom button and it goes automatically to your classroom. You can share it through Remind or you can grab the embed code and embed it on your website. Or you can even grab the QR code and have the kids scan it. There are so many different ways to share it. You choose which works best for you in your classroom. Okay, there are a few different things inside your educator dashboard. You can click on mixtapes, and mixtapes are where you pull the best and the brightest from all of your different grids and put it together in a mixtape, all mixed up, so that you can share it with others. So you can pull from different responses and different answers, and you can share it out to the world or to your just to your parents and to your school. The Disco Library is a place where other teachers can submit uh, templates for you to use. So there's all the time great ideas. There are over 5,000 there right now that you can click and add to your classroom very easily. 
and there are grid pals. Grid pals are a way for um, Flipgrid classrooms to connect with other Flipgrid classrooms all over the world. So you can see everywhere there's a plus sign is a Flipgrid classroom waiting for you to uh, visit them and to connect the two student, uh, the two groups of students together. So lots of chances for interactivity there. And basically that's the gist of getting into Flipgrid. The best way to learn about it is to get in there, push all the buttons and just give it a shot. If you have any questions, you are welcome to contact me with the contact information that is provided below.